Bob Beckel. Congressman Danemark, you look remarkably well for a man who fell off the Empire State Building. Welcome to Crossfire. Uh, Congressman, let me ask you, you know, communists like Castro treat their artists uh, uh, one way. They put them in jail if they don't like what they're saying, or the, sometimes they kill them. They use state money to decide what kind of art their people are going to see. Now, Jesse Helms, with your help, made a law that essentially censured art in America. Why are you trying to censure art in America just like Castro is trying to do in Cuba. I don't understand it. You've got it all wrong. We're not censoring anything. Uh, if people want to write that they want to throw me off the Empire State Building, it's a free country. They can do it on their own money. But when they use the taxpayers' money, then I think we who represent the taxpayers have a right to say uh, there are conditions under which you can use this money. Yeah, well, Congressman, let me, let's ask ourselves, why did that guy say what he said about you? You recently wrote a book, a, a new book that's just out, yeah. called Shadow in the Land, Homosexuality in America. Right. Let me just read one page, page 17, for, for you for a moment. You said in there, homosexualities, homosexuals are insisting that young people be taught how to perform homosexual and heterosexual acts in our public schools. Mm -hmm. Many schools have instituted such sex education. That's right. First of all, if you can find me a school like that, I'll jump off the State Empire of State Vermont. Building for you, Stay uh, number mind. one. But do you do you understand there's a guy dying of AIDS, yeah. you have made a history of bashing homosexuals, yeah. and you wonder why this guy decides to say something in his fantasy about what he'd like to do to Bill Danemeyer. Well, there's a program in the state of Vermont that does precisely what I described Teaches in the book. That, someone has sexual acts in the school? That's right. Oh, come on, Carson. Well, now we, listen, it doesn't surprise oh, me you wouldn't Pat, know that. You come on, you'd, Pat. You can't have shows on it. What are you talking about? You had did, shows on teaching people how to do homosexual right. acts? This is sure in school system. You, you guys have gone off the edge. You no, didn't I fall off the, the building tonight, did you? The people doing that in the public schools of Vermont are the ones going off the deep end. All right, they talking about Bob Beckel, talking about, let's get Frank Zappin. To, Frank, let me read you what, something that the uh, fellow that did the catalog wrote to Cat. He wasn't fantasizing about it. Here's a direct quote from him in a catalog introducing the exhibit. He says, speaking of Cardinal O'Connor, New York's Catholic uh, Archbishop, quote, this fat cannibal from that house of walking swastikas up on Fifth Avenue, that's St. Patrick's Cathedral, should lose his tax-exempt status and pay retroactive taxes from the last couple centuries. He goes on to say, I believe in the death penalty for people in positions of power who commit crimes against humanity, i.e. fascism. This, quote, creep in black skirts. Now, let me ask you why American Catholics, who are one-fourth of the population, should be required to pay taxes to subsidize that kind of hate. I don't think they should be required to pay taxes to subsidize hate. However, I don't think that the government should be in the position to choose what is good art, what is bad art, which artists get money to live by, and which artists are denied the money and thereby excluded from the marketplace. All right, Frank, question. If there's art up there that, that 90 or 95 percent of the people find to be trash and not art, to be pornography, why can't they tell their congressmen who vote these dollars, we don't want any more money going for that kind of stuff that we consider trash and for this type of hate literature against Catholic prelates? What's wrong well, with the taxpayers saying that? First of all, the person has to be able to see the art to make up his own mind. The danger here is that the government will set up a situation where they never get to see the art to decide. Well, that's, that's a danger, but I talked to an art critic, and he went over to the show, and I asked him to describe it to me. And he says, unlike Maplethorpe, who he said is a, is a, is a terrific photographer, this is lousy, photo, excuse me, mediocre photographs, frontal nudity of homosexuals, you know, up close genitalia. All right, why is that art and why should we subsidize that? Well, one definition of art would be to describe it as the manipulation of symbols. And part of the argument here is people on, uh, in a certain part of the government object to the symbols which are being manipulated and also the direction in which the symbols are being manipulated. And so much of this argument seems to be based on homophobia. I think that this is the real argument, is the homophobic aspect of it, rather than matters pertaining to art. Frank, Frank Zappa, you're exactly right. Uh, it, the, the question here, I think, arises out of a very sensitive issue. It was an AIDS exhibit. There's nothing about an AIDS exhibit that's going to necessarily look too artistic or is not going to be very pretty. But in whose eyes, who makes the decisions for you, for me, for Frank Zappa, for anybody else? Why should you make a decision what you think is decent and what I ought to be able to see or anybody else ought to be able to see? You got this all mixed up. The issue is not censorship, it's sponsorship. It is not proper, in my judgment, for people's taxpayers' 
dollars to be subsidizing this filth. I'll say it again. If people want to go into the private sector, raise their own, own money and publish what they want or put photographs up what they want, it's a free country. They Guys, can do listen, it. Listen, listen. The Sistine Chapel when Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, it was done yeah. with public funds and it caused a huge uproar. Now, yeah. if you and Buchanan were around then, you probably want to pay for that over with John Wayne posters. The fact of the <laughs> matter is, art at any time, in any time in history, it depends on who looks at it. What you, you might consider you trash, other people might consider Are art. You tell me, for the Maplethorpe thing, you think a picture of a guy's rear end with a bullwhip sticking out of it is art? I think if he thought it was art, and he's an artist, and he decided that was artistic. Some how people do, happen to think it is, Pat. How I know, do you, know you don't. All right, how I do mean, you, you think Howdy Doody's good right, art? Look, we're talking about what do you some mean serious the question, questions here. You think that's serious? How? Who are you then, and who are they to take something like a, uh, a, a crucifix and drop it in some urine and say, that's art. What makes it art? The fact he got $15,000 from the NEA. That's all that makes it Pat, art. who are you? Let me ask Congressman Denemeyer this. Who are, are, are you an art critic? Are you and Helms art critics? Are you to make the decision that what that Christ that in the urine bottle is bad art? I may think it's bad art. I think it's a bad idea. I'm sorry they did it. But why should you say that that should not be considered art? The point is sponsorship, and I think in this instance, when we're looking at the nation adding a quarter of a trillion dollars to its national debt every year, as far as the eye can see, and appropriating $130 million to this NEA, the smartest thing we should do is take all their money away. We wouldn't have this controversy. Right, Frank Zappa, isn't this the point? Look, if, if somebody wants to think Serrano is art, or Maplethorpe is art, or even what I've just read you is fine literature, that's your own business in a free country. Our objection, I think Congressman Dan Myers, is we really are sick and tired of spending $170 million a year to finance stuff we think is junk and deeply offensive. Let's take all the money out of it and let them go do what they want. Well, that's one possible uh, answer to it. The other thing is to re-examine what happened to the rest of the budget. I mean, it's kind of unusual that you'd be quibbling about a mere $170 million that buys what, about two spare tires for a B-2 bomber. When you consider the rest of the uh, stupid ways that taxpayers' money is, is spent in Washington, D.C., it's ludicrous to be arguing about that particular $170 right. million. Dollars. But if, if this 170 is stupid, let's at least start there and cut that, okay? No, I wouldn't start there and cut that. Actually, what I would do is say, let's leave the $170 million and cut the involvement of the congressman out of it, because these people are not qualified to legislate normal things, let alone decide what art is going to be about. The only thing these guys are good for is being incumbents. Mr., would you please do something for me? Come to a town hall forum in Orange County, California, or any place in America, and say that to the people, the taxpayers of this country, whose hard work puts up the money. You know what I think is going to happen to you? You're going to be hooted right out of that building. <laughs> Mr. Zappa? No comment. No comment on that. Okay, we'll take a break now. We come back. We're going to deal with the whole issue of art, and we're going to go a little bit further into that New York exhibit. Welcome back. We're talking about the latest blazing controversy to involve the National Endowment for the Arts, where NEA had threatened to defund an exhibit in New York dealing with victims of AIDS. Until the threat was lifted today, the arts community was in an uproar over what it considered censorship. All right, our guests to discuss this. I'm sorry we missed that bite there from CNN. Our guests here are Congressman Bill Dannemeyer, who's been a critic of the NEA, rather emphatic critic, and out in Los Angeles, Frank Zappa. Now, Frank, why don't you talk to the question why you consider it censorship when Congressman Dannemeyer or us, the rest of us, simply criticize using our tax dollars to back this sort of stuff? Well, let's backtrack to the little controversy about this artist space place in New York. Uh, the thing, the, uh, the statement that was made, the original criticism of this was they considered that the brochure that accompanied the exhibit to be part of the exhibit, and because it had some manipulation of symbols, verbal symbols, in this booklet, they said it wasn't art, it was politics, and they were therefore going to pull the funding. And I, I think that, th that statement is what caused the furor. All right, let me ask you. Uh, we all know in the 1930s, Hitler was very big on art and architecture. There is such a thing as Nazi art. 
Now, I mean, would there not be an uproar and a legitimate uproar if an exhibit were put on of Nazi art, say, in one of the museums in Washington, D.C., to show the art of the 30s, and this were funded by American taxpayers and Jewish taxpayers? There would be an outcry, and it seems to me equally legitimate for Christians to you mean, produce the same kind of outcry about what's going on in New York. Well, it seems that it would be an even bigger outcry if we were to be infested with the type of art that Dannemeyer and Helms like. Yeah, let's, uh, let's another, Frank, uh, Frank, I'm glad you said that because I, I, I'm sure their taste in art is not the same as yours and mine, and certainly not if you can. Wait, you, ra oh, you raised Hitler for a second, and this gets back to my point. You talk about sponsorship, I talk about censorship. Adolf Hitler censured artists. He didn't let artists participate in their community. If he didn't like them, he had them shot. Mm -hmm. You say sponsorship. The federal government ought to put money behind the arts. We're not spending enough money for arts. We're spending enough money on all those bombers you want to build. But what in the world are we asking? now the people of the United States to accept the fact who fought for liberty and freedom that you guys up here ought to dictate what they can and cannot see, including Hitler memorabilia. If they want to look at Hitler memorabilia, that's their business. I wouldn't go and there wouldn't I, be enough. That's their business. But should you're they right. be able to do it? Bob Beckel, you're right. What we are saying simply is you don't ask the taxpayers to pay for it. Yeah, but what you're asking to do is gut an entire uh, education or art budget because of one simple AIDS thing in New York. You guys are Can losing your mind over this. Go ahead. I, Go ahead, Frank. Uh, I don't have the statistics, but I, maybe uh, the congressman does. Out of the $170 million of the annual budget that goes for the arts in the United States, how much of it goes for the piss Christ and how much of it goes for things like community orchestras, uh, ballet schools for kids in the Midwest and things of that nature where yeah. taxpayers' money goes back Frank. into participatory art projects that everybody gets to be involved in. There you know was what the, the, the split yeah. is? The, uh, there was $45,000 of federal money that went into that other exhibit, and there's about $10,000 that went into the current exhibit we're talking about. I happen to believe that John Frohmeyer, the current head of NEA, made the right decision when he said we weren't going to use federal money to finance this current exhibit in New York, but apparently he's changed his yeah, mind. Well, apparently he changed his mind, Congressman, because he went up there, he went up there and looked yeah. and saw it and said, in fact, this is art, and we ought to fund it. Yeah. And wait a second yeah. now, Frank... Frank, Frank answered a very, asked a very good question, and he said how much of it, Frank, it's 99.999% goes to things like community orchestras, like high school uh, plays, like funding for, uh, for, for various programs for handicapped people, but these guys pick out, you added Danimars, uh, you added up 58,000 bucks out of that yeah. entire budget. I mean, yeah. you're exactly right, and well, these Bob, guys let me, are making let me, let me a big ask deal. A question. Let me ask a question this way. What portion of the deficit would would we like would you like us to send you to pay for this art? First of all, I'd like you to get Ronald Reagan back here and take the trillion and a half dollar de deficit he ran up with most of you guys on the Wait a minute, help. wait a minute. But Presidents wait, don't set levels. Wait, let's not get into a budget. Wait, let's not get into a budget. Congress you is want the to throw out, responsible for You spending. want to throw out the bathroom of the baby here, don't you? You want to throw away no, all no, arts no, no, funding no, no, because no, you no. don't like a couple of no, exhibits. All we want is to get Yeah, you do. That's what you said. You said let's do away with the NEA. Certainly let's do away with the bathwater. Oh, I see. That's a, you want to yeah. get away with the bathroom? You got it. But, do, but you're saying you that you want to keep... Oh, but do you want to keep the NEA funding? Don't you think the federal government ought to fund some art programs in America? My view would be, given what's going on now, they ought to defund and, it. They ought to defund the whole thing and leave it on the state and local level. Let me bring Frank uh, Zapp into this. Frank, uh, Robert Motherwell said about Leonard Bernstein, who, as you know, turned down his National Medal uh, of Art, uh, on the basis he was protesting this ex uh, the, the uh, alleged defunding or the almost defunding of that exhibit, Robert Motherwell said, in effect, he didn't want, he said, I don't want a grandstand and I don't want to spit in the president's face. Do you think that's what Leonard Bernstein did when he turned down that uh, medal or do you think he was grandstanding or not? I have no idea because I didn't see that on the news. If that's one of, one of the few things that happened on the news that I missed, so I wouldn't like to comment on it. Okay, what did you think of Mr. Bernstein's protest about what you fellows were doing? Well, I think he had the prerogative of doing that if he chose to follow that point of view. I mean, uh, he exercised a matter of conscience, and I respect him for but, it. But, Congressman, don't you think, I mean, Leonard Bernstein's an American treasure. And this is a guy now reacting to what you people have done with this silly Helms Amendment. This is a guy who's saying to you, in as yeah. in his, in dramatic a way as he possibly can, by not accepting a medal from the President of the United States, which I'm sure Leonard Bernstein would like to have, but what he's saying is, you guys have gone too far 
are. He wants to protect his craft and the craft of other people. And what he's saying to you, flat to your face, this is Leonard Bernstein. This is a guy that doesn't do the kind of art you don't like. This is a guy yeah. saying, you're wrong, stop, we're down to a slippery slope here, and a lot of people are going to get hurt and defamed because of what you guys are doing. I think that, the thing, uh, Bob, listen up a moment to respond to Beckel here, is that, you know, there are standards in our world that people must observe, whether in the private sector or the governmental sector. And I'm afraid whether you realize it or not, you're arguing that there should be no standards in our Your standards or my standards or Frank's standards or Pat's the standards, standard, who ought to set standards The in law, America? we prescribe pornography in this country. That's in the statutes of this country, right. have been forever. If we're going to take a we'll quick say. break. Frank Zapp will give you a chance to answer that when we come back. When we come back, we're also going to take up a question of pro-communist art. In the city of New York, a 6,000 square foot mural making heroes out of Marx and Lenin. Welcome back. We're talking about controversial art. Frank Zappa, up on the West Side Highway, there's a six or seven story building in New York City. This weekend, they're unveiling what they call the Pathfinder Mural. Now, let me tell you who is on it. And it's huge portraits of Lenin, Marx, Trotsky, Tomas Borges, who's the Stalinist Minister of Interior in Nicaragua, Che Guevara, Castro, other communists. Now, it's in part indirectly funded by the New York State Council on the Arts. Can you not appreciate why, when we're seeing the Berlin Wall come down and people escaping the evil that was done by those individuals, why New Yorkers would really be outraged that their tax dollars are gone for something like this? Well, I'm not sure that that's the right way to look at it. Uh, I think that if you put up a mural <clears throat> celebrating communist heroes, it's got to be more of a laugh to New Yorkers than an outrage, especially seeing that uh, how communism has failed every place. All right, but Frank, but let me what, ask you this. But, let me ask you this. It has failed every place, but there's a lot of people that live in New York they were under that system and who saw family butchered and killed, parents taken away, never seen again. Mm -hmm. Don't they have a right to be outraged that in a free country they're celebrating those type people with their tax dollars? Well, if some people would be equally outraged at what happens with their tax dollars and things like the HUD scandal or what happened with Lincoln Savings or uh, the way things are done at the Pentagon. That's even more of an outrage. Why are we talking about a mural on a building in New York? Let me say a because couple of Frank, things about... Frank, we don't know if you know that me. much about HUD, to be honest. Frank, Frank the, the one thing you want to keep in mind here is you just touched a sense of nerve with Buchanan on HUD because all his buddies are going to jail as a result of it. But let me, let me yeah, ask well, you... you see that let picture me, of Bosky, maybe they'll come ask, out looking like that. <laughs> let me ask the congressman a question. You said that you, there's certain standards about pornography, if I think you said it, that I checked the law. Yeah. I know you don't like the idea of nudity uh, in public. Now, in the rotunda of the Capitol where you serve, right. up in the ceiling, yeah. there's a painting of a woman who is topless. You think we ought to cover that up? That was paid for by taxpayers' dollars. Not at all. You have to take the, all of the exhibits over there. I realize some people are offended by somebody who's in there, but when you look at all of the exhibits, one exhibit that in the manner you described doesn't offend anybody. It's part of art. You can see this in any library you go to around the country. There's statutory around it. But I'm talking about the, the express, you know, the language that Pat read here. Federal taxpayers' money should not be used to propagandize against and, and anybody. And I say that Jesse, on the political right and, and the political I say left. that Jesse Helms shouldn't be the one to make the decisions about what ought to be worthwhile writing and what is not worthwhile writing. The sensible writing. way is for us to cut off Jesse, the funding. We'll yeah. eliminate the dispute. Jesse doesn't sit in there. Mr. Frommeyer does. I don't know how long he's going to be there if they keep this up. Frank Zappa, thanks very much for being with us from uh, from the coast. Congressman okay. Danemeyer, Thank thanks. Thank you, Pat. Mr. Thanks. Beck will be uh, back in a moment with me, and we'll discuss art in America. You know, Pat, since 1960, the NEA has made about 85,000 decisions mm -hmm. on where they're going to grant money for art. About 20 mm -hmm. of them were controversial. Right. They were going along just fine. Okay. And then your pal Jesse Helms and our good friend Mr. Danemai here decided that they wanted to instruct these people how to do mm -hmm. their job. Why in the world are we going to allow guys like Helms and Danemai to start telling mm -hmm. the NEA what they should or should not do? Who are they to make those judgments? They don't. Yeah, Bob, as you know, the Democratic Congress, controlled by Democrats in both houses, supported their amendment. 
That's why. No, I'll tell you what they did do. They supported an amendment that was so difficult for any politician to vote against because uh -huh. what they do is they get people like what you and Dannemeyer <laughs> inciting people to riot by talking about uh, Jesus Christ in a urine jar. Now, who's uh, going to vote against that? All right, let what? me ask you. I, you know, I believe in free speech. This fat cannibal is what they called Cardinal O'Connor from that house of walking swastikas on Fifth Avenue, which is St. Patrick's Cathedral. Should taxpayers fund that kind of hate literature? I don't think taxpayers necessarily have to necessarily. make a decision. No, the, the answer is if do. that's what people consider art, then I guess taxpayers are going to fund it. But let me tell you something, Pat. That insults you. There's an awful lot of art that insults me. But you and I shouldn't Look, be making a decision for why, the rest of the Why people. fund this guy? All right, Pat, we're never going to agree on this one, I can tell you. From the left, I'm Bob Beckel. Good night from Crossfire. From the right, Pat Buchanan, join us tomorrow night for another edition of Crossfire.